And Bernard Chariot sign is the 2020 Istanbul Marathon Champion. Na wakenyo wangara kwenye mbio za marathon mjini Istanbul uturuki. Karibu sana mtazamaji kwenye taarifa kamili naitwa Nancy Okware na mfasiri wa lugha ya ishara ni Byron Abuli kwenye mitandao ya kijamii utatupata pale kwenye Twitter at @kbc channel1 at @nancy okware na vile vile mtazamaji taarifa hizi zinapeperushwa moja kwa moja kupitia kwenye mtandao wetu wa Facebook at @kbc channel1 news na basi moja kwa moja tukianza ni kwamba Joe Biden alitoa hotuba yake ya kukubali ushindi baada ya kuchaguliwa rais wa Marekani huku akiahidi kuunganisha raia wa Marekani wala sio kuwagawanya kwenye hotuba hiyo ambayo alitoa leo baada ya kukuwa mshindi Biden alisema ya kwamba wapiga kura walimpa ushindi wa zaidi ya kura milioni nne ambazo ni nyingi zaidi kuwahi kuna kiliwa katika historia ya Marekani Trump anasitiza kwamba kulikuwa na udanganyifu kwenye uchaguzi huo na bado hajakubali kushindwa wala kuonekana hadharani tangu Biden ashinde kwenye uchaguzi huo And it is now my great honor to introduce the president elect of the United States of America, Joe Biden. Kamala Harris ambaye anatarajiwa kuwa makamu wa rais wa kwanza mwanamke wa Marekani katika historia ya Marekani, alimwalika Joe Biden kutoa hotuba yake ya kwanza kama rais mteule wa Marekani. Right now, feeling this moment. Joseph Robinette Biden Jr. who will be the 46th president of the United States. Kwenye hotuba yake ya ushindi aliyoitoa Wilmington Delaware, Biden aliahidi kuwa rais ambaye ataiunganisha Marekani wala si kuiganya. I pledge to be a president who seeks not to divide but unify. Who doesn't see red states and blue states, only sees the United States. I work with all my heart with the confidence of the whole people to win the confidence of all of you and for that is what america i believe is about it's about people and that's what our administration will be all about biden pia aliwahimiza wafuasi wa trump wasahau yaliyopita na kutuliza joto la kisiasa nchini humo Rais huyo mteule aliahidi kubuni kamati ya kukabiliana na ugonjwa wa COVID-19 akisema atahakikisha imeanza kutekeleza maamuzi yatakayowafikiwa punde tu atakapowapishwa mwezi Januari mwaka ujao. The people of this nation have spoken. They've delivered us a clear victory. A convincing victory. A victory for we the people. We've won with the most votes ever cast on presidential ticket in the history of the nation 74 million Mgombeaji mwenza wa Biden Kamala Harris alimpongeza marehemu mamaye mhamiaji wa India nchini Marekani na vizazi vingine vya Waamerika weusi wa Asia wazungu na wa Amerika Kusini na wanawake ambao wamechangia pakubwa kufikia pahala hapa When she came here from India at the age of 19, she maybe um, didn't quite imagine this moment. But she believed so deeply in an America where a moment like this is possible. And so I am thinking about her and about the generations of women, black women. Asian, white, Latina, Native American women who throughout our nation's history have paved the way for this moment tonight. This is what we needed. This is what we've been waiting for. It's a day of celebration. The sun is shining for us. Chere has elinoga katika miji mikuu ya Marekani baada ya Biden kushinda. Wafuasi wa Trump waliovunjika nyayo waliandamana katika baadhi ya miji lakini hakukuripotiwa visa vyovyote vya ghasia. 
Trump amemshtumu Biden kwa kukimbilia kujitangaza mshindi huku akisema atapinga matokeo ya uchaguzi katika majimbo ya mwisho muhimu yaliyompa Biden ushindi. Jackie Wambiru, Darubini ya Channel One. Kisalia kwenye taarifa hiyo ni kwamba wa Kenya wamepokea kwa furaha kuchaguliwa kwa Joe Biden kuwa rais wa Marekani wakitumai kuwa hatua hiyo itaboresha uhusiano baina ya nchi hizi mbili. Aidha wa Kenya wamepongeza kuchaguliwa kwa Kamala Harris kuwa makamu wa rais wa kwanza mwanamke nchini Marekani wakisema ufanisi wake utawapa motisha wanawake kote nchini. Kuchaguliwa kwa Joe Biden na Kamala Harris kumepokelewa kwa furaha tele katika nchi mbalimbali kote duniani. Wa Kenya wameungana na ulimwengu katika kuwapongeza wafuasi wa chama cha Democratic huku wakisema ushindi huo utasaidia pakubwa katika kuboresha uhusiano kati ya nchi ya Kenya na Marekani. I believe he has the capacity. He has learned a lot from his predecessor Obama and I'm hoping uh, he's going to be more better in terms of performance and delivery. Uh, to the people of, of United States and to the large extent to the Africans. Afrika atawaongeza vizuri. Juu kama hata size hizi ni mzee ile issue wa America walikuwa nayo watajua hata nini. Hata hata atawafanyia. Ni mtu mtulivu alafu ni mtu ambaye amekoma. Hata ukiona vile anaongea vile unaongelesha watu unaona ni mtu mzuri ambaye anaweza ongoza mzuri. Joe Biden alimshinda Donald Trump katika uchaguzi ambao ulifuatiliwa kwa makini na mamilioni ya watu kote duniani wakiwemo wa Kenya. Rais wa nchi yoyote ameshindwa ni vizuri aitikie wito wa wananchi. Hasa kama wananchi wao wenyewe ndio wamepiga kura na kwa uamuzi wao wa kikatiba wakaona ni vizuri wakuwe na kiongozi fulani aidha wa Kenya wamefurahishwa na hatua ya kihistoria ya kuchaguliwa kwa seneta Kamala Harris kuwa makamu wa rais wa kwanza mwanamke nchini Marekani It makes me feel proud at the same time I admire her courage because it's not easy in a, in a foreign country like US to have an, a black woman in the government so I think she stands out as a role model to other girls out there I feel good um, I think it's a step to, it's a step towards the we no one is limited we can only limit ourselves but if you have the vision to lead other people then and the people can believe in you then they will give you that capacity and authority to lead ufanisi huo wa kamala harris unajiri wakati ambapo bunge la kenya linajitahidi kutimiza masharti ya sheria kuhusu thuluthi mbili ya uwakilishaji wa jinsia ni matumaini ya wa Kenya kwamba uhusiano baina ya Kenya na Amerika utaimarika chini ya uongozi wa Joe Biden kwa manufaa ya nchi zote mbili. Yusuf Fara Darubini ya Channel 1 Nairobi. Na mshukrani sana Yusuf Fara kwa taarifa hiyo na mtazamaji tukiendelea ni kwamba viongozi wa ulimwengu wametuma risala za pongezi na heri njema kwa Joe Biden muda mfupi baada ya kutangazwa kuwa rais mteule wa Marekani. Rais Uhuru Kenyatta ni miongoni mwa viongozi waliotuma risala kwa Biden akisema ushindi wake unatoa fursa zaidi ya ushirikiano kati ya Kenya na Marekani. Rais Uhuru Kenyatta alitaja ushindi wa Biden kuwa ishara ya imani ya Wamarekani kwa uongozi wa rais huyo mteule ambaye awali alihudumu kama makamu wa rais nchini humo. Rais Kenyatta alimtaja Biden kuwa rafiki wa Kenya akisema kuwa ushindi wake utaimarisha uhusiano baina ya Kenya na Marekani. Kiongozi wa chama cha ODM Raila Odinga alimpongeza Biden akisema anatazamia kushirikiana naye katika kutatua changamoto zinazosibu ulimwengu kama vile janga la corona, kuzorota kwa uchumi za mataifa mbalimbali na mabadiliko ya hali ya anga. Rais wa Ufaransa Emmanuel Macron alisema wa Marekani wamefanya uamuzi wao na kwamba yapo mengi yanayohitajika kufanywa ili kutatua changamoto zinazokabili taifa zote mbili. Kwenye ujumbe wake kupitia mtandao wa Twitter, Waziri Mkuu wa Canada Justin Trudeau alisema anatarajia kushirikiana na Biden kuimarisha mataifa yote mawili. Jack Wambiru, Darubini ya Channel 1 basi mtazamaji tukirejea humu nchini ni kwamba watu 108 zaidi wameaga dunia kutokana na ugonjwa wa COVID-19 katika muda wa juma moja lililopita wakati ambapo idadi ya maambukizi mapya inazidi kuongezeka 
Hivi leo Wizara ya Afya imesema kuwa watu 719 zaidi wameambukizwa ugonjwa huo, ilhali wengine nane wameaga dunia. Mtazamaji hii hapa taarifa zaidi kuhusu ongezeko la maambukizi ya COVID-19 huku serikali ikitangaza masharti mapya kudhibiti msambao huo ikiwemo ni pamoja na marufuku ya mikutano ya hadhara. Jumla ya maambukizi ya COVID-19 nchini ilizidi kuongezeka leo wakati visa vipya 719 vilinakiliwa kutoka kwa sampuli 1432 zilizopimwa. Watu wanani zaidi waliaga dunia idadi ambayo ni ya chini kilinganishwa na wale waliofariki mapema wiki hii ambapo vifo moja na nani vya COVID-19 vimeripotiwa Jumahili pekee. Jumla ya watu waliowangamia kutokana na ugonjwa huo humu nchini sasa imefika 1111 huku walioambukizwa kufikia sasa wakiwa 1062488 Jumahili visa vipya 6611 vya ugonjwa huo vilinakiliwa humu nchini huku kukiwa na wasiwasi kwamba wakenya wamekuwa kikaidi maagizo ya serikali Jumla ya watu waliopona ugonjwa huo ilifika 1441931 baada ya wagonjwa 910 wawili kupata nafuu. Kwa sasa wagonjwa 1316 wamelazwa kwenye hospitali mbalimbali huku wengine 5623 wakiwa chini ya mpango wa utunzi wa nyumbani. Wagonjwa sitini wamelazwa kwenye vyumba vya wagonjwa mahututi, 23 wakihitaji vipumulio na 30 wawili wakiendelea kupokea hewa ya oksijeni. Wagonjwa sabini wengine pia wanapokea hewa ya oksijeni, hamsini na tisa wakiwa kwenye wadi ya kawaida na wengine kumi na moja katika vyumba vya huduma maalum. Nancy Okware, Darubini ya Channel 1. Na basi mtazamaji baada ya taarifa hiyo anapumzika kisha nitarejea na mengi zaidi lakini na washukuru wote ambao wanatazama kupitia kwenye mtandao wetu wa Facebook akiwemo Philip Mutuku, uh, Charles Osoro, vile vile Baba Leslie, Peter Akipani akiwa Turkana na Peter Brown akiwa Moyale. Tutarejea baada ya muda usio kwa mrefu. My primary school life was difficult but my mom struggled and I, I managed to finish the class age 2016. I knew back in my heart that when I was getting a, a scholarship I couldn't make it for the high school. My friend told me all benefit of going to fly, scholarship, school fees, shopping, transport. I knew that there's no any option to get the school fees. That's why I went to apply the scholarship. My mom was called back and told that I didn't got a scholarship. I knew it that my dreams would come to pass. 2020, when the coronavirus pandemic came, uh, I was very, very worried about my KCC. But Wings to Fly gave us light system and the radio that will continue lessons repeat. Now I can read at night and wake up very early in the morning, like four, to go through my books. Before I got the scholarship, it was like darkness was before me. But when I got the Wings to Fly scholarship, Light has come to my life, and I am sure that by God's grace I will go to the best university in this world, which is Oxford, to partake medicine and surgery, and I can see my future being very, very good. na mkaribu mtazamaji kwenye awamu ya pili ya darubini wikendi Kenya leo iliungana na nchi wanachama wa jumuiya ya madola yani Commonwealth kwa maadhimisho ya kila mwaka ya siku ya ukumbusho Siku hii ya ukumbusho imeadhimishwa na nchi za jumuiya ya madola tangu mwisho wa vita vikuu vya kwanza vya dunia kwa heshima ya wanajeshi waliopoteza maisha yao wakiwa vitani
Sherehe hizo za kila mwaka huadhimishwa kwa maombi na kuwekwa shada za maua katika maeneo ya ukumbusho kwenye nchi zote za jumuiya ya Commonwealth. Siku ya Jumapili maafisa wa kijeshi wa humu nchini na pia wa Uingereza walikusanyika katika eneo la makaburi ya ukumbusho wa vita lililoko mkabala wa barabara ya Ngong Road kutoa heshima zao kwa wenzao waliofariki wakiwa vitani. So this is a special place and this is a special day. Uh, we are here to remember uh, those in the armed forces who've who've lost their lives in the line of duty and and we come here as a as a, a community uh, really to, uh, uh, to to honor uh, the service that they have given these graves are really very symbolic to us as they uh, they give us a real sense of the sacrifice of previous generations uh, and uh, what they went through in order to allow us uh, to live in peace. And so uh, we come together uh, in this act of remembrance uh, to, to really uh, pay homage to their sacrifice, but also uh, to come together to remember those that have survived and over the years have been able to contribute into society too. Uh, so it's been a really important day for us. Brigadier Mark Thornhill alieleza umuhimu wa amani duniani. So what we're uh, doing here today is uh, is to remember the importance uh, of war and the, and the very uh, large sacrifices that are made, uh, uh, but also the fact that this this conflict has led to uh, to a great deal of peace and security for those of us that uh, are lucky enough to have uh, to have lived in this time really are able to enjoy uh, living in a peaceful environment. Maadhimisho ya miaka iliyopita ya siku ya ukumbusho yalivutia umati wa watu lakini mwaka huu idadi hiyo ilikuwa ndogo kuambatana na kanuni zilizotangazwa na serikali kuzuia kuenea kwa ugonjwa wa COVID-19. Wakati wa vita vikuu vya kwanza vya duniani, wakenya wengi walijisajili jeshini huku wengine wakihudumu kama wafanyikazi wa kubeba silaha, chakula na mahitaji mengine. Nikiripotia darubini ya Channel 1 mimi ni Emily K. Badi. Mehimizo kuwa mstari wa mbele katika kutoa mafunzo kuhusiana na ripoti ya BBI wakiongea huko kitengela kiongozi wa chama cha Waipa Kalonzo Musyoka na gavana wa kaunti ya Kajado Joseph Olelenku walisema mikutano ya kidini inatoa fursa mwafaka za kuelimisha wakenya kuhusu yaliomo kwenye ripoti hiyo ya BBI Wakenya wanaendelea kudurusu yaliomo kwenye ripoti ya BBI na sasa baadhi ya viongozi wanaunga mkono mchakato huo wanalitaka kanisa kuwa kwenye mstari wa mbele kuipendekeza kwa mwananchi we are told very clearly as christians and i'm talking to my fellow christian the people of god they perish for not having the knowledge so we need to know to have the knowledge of the of the bbi so we don't perish thinking that we are having everything but yet we are having half cooked information i would really urge every kenyan as a Christian to read the BBI. And in fact, if there's a place to discuss BBI, I want to submit is actually in church. Because this is a document that carries his nation. This is not politics. This is our life. Akiongea katika county ya Kajiado kiongozi wa chama cha Waipa Kalonzo Musyoka alisema kanisa linaweza kuelimisha wa Kenya kuhusu muhimu wa ripoti hiyo. Governor wa county ya Kajiado Joseph Olelenku alieleza matumaini kwamba jamii ya ma itaunga mapendekezo ya mabadiliko ya katiba yaliyomo kwenye ripoti ya BBI tuweke amani kama taifa kama county kwa sababu mambo ya maendeleo iwe mabarabara iwe sewage systems iwe masoko they all count for nothing where there is no peace they are saying the prime minister will come from dynasty 
If you look at the BBI, the prime minister will come from the National Assembly. So, will Uhuru go back to Katundu to run for presidency, I mean for MP, for him to be a prime minister? Please, watch any good anganyo. Naye kiongozi wa chama cha ANC Musalia Mudavadi aliyehudhuria ibada ya Jumapili katika kanisa la Christ is the Answer Ministry jijini Nairobi alitoa wito wa kutafakari zaidi mapendekezo ya ripoti hiyo bali na kutafuta maridhiano It's a listening process and it's always important on uh, matters of such weight important that uh, people are listened to. Mudavadi aliwatahadharisha wanasiasa dhidi ya kutumia mapendekezo ya mabadiliko ya katiba kama kigezo cha kujitafutia umaarufu kabla uchaguzi mkuu jao. So I'm only pleading to you that let us see what can be done to zero in on a more united position as a country during this interim period once the referendum is over whichever way it goes the political formations for 2022 will then be seen after mudavadi alisema haya wakati baadhi ya viongozi wa kidini katika kaunti ya narok walitaka ripoti hiyo itafsiriwe kwa kiswahili already now it is out i would like to request all the kenans to go get this you know booklet let's see the information and let's be sober let's not be biased uh, tunaomba watu wote wa Kenya wajisomee uh, na tuache ile hali ya kusema kwa sababu kiongozi wangu amesoma kama bishop ama 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 um, you know, MP wako ambunge wako ama MC hata nami nimejua kwamba hiyo kitu ni sawa Kevin Washira Darubini Channel 1 Tukisalia humu nchini ni kwamba viongozi kutoka kaunti ya Meru wamelalamika kuhusu ongezeko la au wamelalamika kuhusu ongezeko la mihadarati au matumizi ya mihadarati kati ya kaunti ya Meru na Laikipia Mbunge wa Buuri Rindikiri Mugambi ametoa wito uh, kwa wale viongozi wa kaunti hizo mbili kukabiliana na ulanguzi wa dawa hizo za kulevya ambao unaathiri maisha ya wakazi. Kwa habari hizi na nyingine huu hapa mseto wa habari kutoka magazu, Magatuzini. Akiongea huko Kibirishi katika kaunti ya Meru, mbunge huyo wa Buuri alisema pombe haramu na mihadarati zinaingizwa katika vituo mbalimbali vya kaunti ya Meru na kuathiri utendakazi wa wanaume katika sehemu hiyo. Kwa hiyo madam DCC imeshaongea na kaunti commission na tayari na tuko na jama ya kukuja ndio tukae chini kwa sababu pombe ya kulevia na mandawa ya kulevia inapitia ligi eh, ile vijiti ya, ya ligi inaingia kwetu sehemu inaitwa Nkando alafu inapitishwa kuja pande hii. Kwa hivyo naomba tushirikiane kwa haya. Wakati huo huo juhudi za kuunganisha makanisa mawili katika kaunti ya Kiambu hazijafanikiwa kufuatia shutuma kuhusu uongozi wa umini wa kanisa la African Independent Pentecostal Church of Kenya na wale wa kanisa la African Independent Pentecostal Church of Africa wamekuwa wakitafuta njia za kuyaunganisha makanisa hayo kufuatia mizozo ya uongozi. Hii kanisa yetu ni independent. Na ikiwa independent hatuko chini ya kanisa lingine. Ile kitu tunakuaga naye tunakuaga na federation na federation ni makanisa mingi zaidi ya 100. Na zaidi ya wakuu elfu mbili wa shule kote nchini wamepokea mafunzo kuhusu teknolojia ya kisasa ya habari kupitia mradi wa hivi punde wa African Digital Schools. Sasa kwa wakati huu walimu wetu wako na ujuzi wa hali ya juu kwa kutengeneza hata uh, content wakitumia Uh, softwares ya yeah, ICT ya yeah, technologies. Kuingineko shule hamsini za kaunti ya Nyandarua zimenufaika na matangi yaliyo na uwezo wa kuhifadhi lita elfu kumi za maji kutoka kwa hazina ya serikali ya kitaifa ya kuimarisha miundo msingi shuleni ili kuziandaa kwa ufunguzi tena jinsi ilivyotangazwa na serikali. Kwa hivyo leo niko na shule wamekuja kuchukua tanks ndio watoto wale wanaenda shule kufanya exams. Wakute kuna preparation imefanywa already kuna maji 
kuna sanitizer na kuna masks. Bitches get on your teach Darubini your channel 1. The road to the 2021 Africa Cup of Nations brings us home to another exciting qualifier where Harambe Stars host the Colasantes of Comoros on Wednesday, the 11th of November at Kasarani. Watch it live and exclusive on KBC Channel 1 at 7 p.m. as we continue to showcase Africa's best on your true sports partner. Betika proudly brings you Kenya vs. Comoros Afcon qualifier live on KBC Channel 1. Na mchezamaji karibu sasa tuangazia liojiri katika uga wa michezo. Wa Kenya Bernard Sang na Diana Chemtai Kipyoke walistahimili ukinzani mkali na kuibuka washindi kwenye mbio za marathon za Istanbul. Wanariadha hao walishinda mbio hizo kwa muda wa saa mbili dakika kumi na moja na sekunde arubaina tisa na saa mbili dakika ishire na mbili na sekunde sita mtawalia. Kundi la wanariadha tisa ambalo lilijumuisha Bernard Sang, Felix Kimutai, Hailu Zaidu na mshindi wa nishani ya Shaba kwenye michezo olimpiki mwaka 2008 Edwin Soy ilizitawala mbio hizo tangu mwanzoni. Sang, Kimutai, Zaidu, Tesgai Getachew na Cosmos Biret walisalia katika kundi hilo baada ya kilomita 25. Getachew na Biret walisalia nyuma na kuwapa fursa Sang, Kimutai na Zaidu kuwania taji hiyo. And Bernard Chariot Sang is the 2020 Istanbul Marathon Champion. Katika mbio za wanawake, Diana Kipyoke alikuwa kwenye kundi la kwanza tangu mwanzoni pamoja na Ethiopia Hiwot Gabrikidan, Tigist Memuye, Fatu Zirei na Yeshi Kalayu Chekole. Memuye alisalia nyuma na kutoa fursa kwa wanawake wane kuwa ni ataji hiyo. Kipyo kei alifika utepeni kwa muda wa saa mbili, dakika 22 na sekunde 06, mbele ya Ethiopia Hiwot Gabrikidan, alia maliza wapili. Tigist memuye aliridhika na nafasi ya tatu. Karanja David, darubini michezo. Bila shaka tunasema pongezi kwa wanariadha hao wa Kenya. Tukiendelea ni kwamba winga wa Harambe Stars Ayub Timbe ni miongoni mwa wachezaji wa kwanza wa kulipwa waliowasili kambini huku timu hiyo ikijiandaa kuchuana na Comoros kwenye mechi ya kufuzu kwa kombe la bara Afrika mwaka 2021. Timbe ambaye kwa sasa hana kilabu baada ya kuondoka Beijing Renhe ya Uchina aliwasili kambini pamoja na mshambulizi John anayechezea uh, Tanta FC ya Misri na mchezaji wa UD Las Palmas ya Uhispania Ismail Gonzalez. Wachezaji wengine wa kulipo wanaotarajiwa kambini ni nahodha Victor Wanyama, Eric Johanna, Brian Mandela, Melinda Lango Arnold Origi, Joseph Okumu na Johanna Omolo. Mechi ya mkondo wa kwanza itachezo wanjani kasarani novemba kumina moja na mechi ya marudiano ichezo novemba kumina tano. Kungineko ni kwamba timu ya wazito FC na ushiriki katika ligi kuu ya soka humu nchini ilishinda Narok United mabao matano kwa moja kwenye mechi ya kirafiki iliochezwa katika uwanja wa William Olentimama mjini Narok. Mshambulizi Morris Ojoang alipachika kimiani bao la kwanza katika dakika ya pili kabla ya Bonfas Omondi kufunga la pili dakika mbili baadaye. Joe Waithera alifunga bao la tatu na Bernard Ocheng na Vincent Oburu wakaongeza mabao mawili zaidi. I hope the friendly is just to familiarize ourselves with the ground because this, this will be our home, home ground. So at least we have to come and get used to it. The only thing, we, we couldn't come and play a bigger team here because we are even, we are, we are trying to see how the team can combine well, how we can score goals. And when it's tough, you won't make 
you will make something good out of it. Now to Gaibuni ni kwamba bao la Hurricane katika dakika ya 88 lilisaidia Tottenham kunya kuwa alama zote tatu dhidi ya West Brom. Safu ya ulinzi ya West Brom ilikosa kumakinika na kumwezesha Ken kuunganisha cross kutoka kwa Matt Doherty. lifted cross to the back post. Igolaris hoping that it goes here. Down goes in Dombe. Bales brought it down. O'Shea was there to get it away. Rechion, has he got the pace? Good. Yeah. Kane. Or Dean Garner on his own up top. Lifted in by Doherty. Harry Kane! And yet again, his 150th goal. Na basi mtazamaji baada ya taarifa hizo za sporti inafika kwenye tamati ya darubini wikendi na washukuru wote waliotazama taarifa hizi kwenye mtandao wetu wa Facebook Joshua Olesipala kutoka Loi Talk Talk Coaches Imran kutoka Vihiga Erot Lokioto kutoka Kakuma Timo Moyeho kutoka Kakamega Judith Amoit kutoka Teso na vile vile Mainye Momanyi kutoka Amabuko Kisi na basi mtazamaji kabla ya kuondoka na kuacha na utabiri wa hali ya hewa naitwa Nancy Okware mfasiri wa lugha ishara ni Tilio Marco Kwaheri Ni wakati mwingine mtazamaji tunapoungana katika utabiri wa hali ya hewa katika muda wa saa 24 zijazo hujambo na karibu jina langu ni Tilio Marco mji wa Kericho ndio baridi zaidi viwango vya joto vitashuka hadi nyuzi moja. wakati huo huo mvua inatarajiwa kuendelea kunyesha katika maeneo mengi ya nchi leo usiku na itakapotimu kesho asubuhi ni kwamba mvua itakayopisha vipindi vya jua inatarajiwa katika maeneo ya kaskazini mashariki maeneo ya Mandera Wajia Garissa na vile vile Marsabit maeneo ya Kitale na Kuru na Eldoret pia kunatarajiwa kuwa na mvua na kupisha vipindi vya jua sawia na maeneo ya Nairobi maeneo ya Nyeri na maeneo ya Meru mwambao wa pwani kunatarajiwa kuwa na rasha rasha za mvua na kupisha vipindi vya jua Itakapotimu majira ya lasiri ni kwamba rasha rasha za mvua na ngurumo za radi zinatarajiwa katika maeneo ya Kisumu, Kericho, Kakamega na Kuru na vile vile Eldoret, Mwambao wa Pwani kutendelea kuwa na rasha rasha za mvua na kupisha vipindi vya jua. Tukiangazia viwango vya joto ni kwamba joto litafikia nyuzi 33 katika maeneo ya Lodwa, kaunti ya Nairobi na kili kati ya nyuzi 25 na 16. Hadi hapo mtazamaji nimehitimisha utabiri wa hali ya hewa kwa sasa hadi wakati mwingine kwa heri ya kuonana Vera Beauty College Vera Beauty